Artists can choose from many objects to make Santa type prints. Objects from nature are often a popular choice. Remember botanist Anna Atkins? She realized that cyanotypes could be used as a scientific tool to capture detailed images of living things that couldn't necessarily be captured in drawings. The images could be copied repeatedly and shared with others for scientific discussion. Let's look at Atkins' cyanotype print of a brown algae from the genus Sargassum, along with a similar live specimen. This brown algae, or seaweed, lives in the ocean. It has a special pigment called fucoxanthin that makes it appear brown in color. It has these berry-like nematocysts, which are filled mostly with oxygen. They allow the algae to float on the surface of the water and maximize its exposure to sunlight for photosynthesis. This leaf-like structure is called a lamina, or blade. And at the base of the seaweed, you can see a root-like structure, called a holdfast, that anchors the algae to coastal rocks. Being able to identify physical characteristics of living things using live observations or photographic images, noting where they're found, what special structures they have, and how they develop over time helps scientists classify them with similar living things. The science of classifying living things is called taxonomy. Why is taxonomy important? Living things on Earth are becoming extinct at an alarming rate due to habitat loss, competition, pollutants, changing weather patterns, disease, human interaction, and other issues. Without a working classification system, estimating the diversity of species, tracking extinction rates, and making informed decisions about how to protect disappearing species would be impossible. So being able to capture images of the organisms that are alive today using photographic methods is extremely important. You could even make a field guide of living things you find in your own backyard. When we think about chemical reactions, we often think that if we mix chemical A with chemical B, we'll get an immediate reaction. But that isn't always the case. Many chemical reactions occur in several steps, one event leading into another. In the case of cyanotype printing, we mix two chemicals together when we coat the paper. But we don't immediately see that deep blue color we're expecting. Why not? The two chemicals we're using on the paper, potassium ferrocyanide and ferric ammonium citrate, will not react with each other until they're exposed to ultraviolet light. That ultraviolet light could come from a lamp or from the sun, but the bottom line is that it takes a series of events to form the blue color that's associated with cyanotype prints. Let's break it down. Ferric ammonium citrate, which is one of the chemicals we add to the paper, has a chemical formula that includes an ammonium ion, iron, and citrate, which is an organic compound, meaning it contains carbon. This chemical is sensitive to ultraviolet light. When it's exposed to ultraviolet light, the iron in this compound is reduced from iron 3 into iron 2 because it gains an electron. That's step one. Once the iron has been reduced, it's able to react with the potassium ferrocyanide, which is the other chemical we use to coat the paper. As this reaction proceeds, a blue color appears on the paper. That's step two. To stop the development, the paper can be rinsed with water. All of the chemicals that are involved in this reaction are soluble in water, except for the blue pigment, so it will stay behind on the paper. And that's how we use chemical reactions to make art. Our sun produces energy across the full electromagnetic spectrum, from very long radio waves to very short gamma waves. But the wavelengths of light that we use to expose the cyanotype images are in the ultraviolet range. Ultraviolet light can be divided into different groups called UVA, UVB, and UVC. UVC rays are almost completely absorbed by Earth's atmosphere, which is good because they're harmful to living things. In fact, we use UVC light to destroy bacteria and fungus. About 95% of the sun's UVB rays are also absorbed by Earth's atmosphere. So UVA rays account for the majority of the ultraviolet radiation reaching Earth's surface. We worry about ultraviolet radiation because UVA 
and UVB rays cause our skin to tan or burn, and they can also increase the risk of certain skin cancers. So how do we block UV light? Well, when we're making cyanotype prints, placing solid objects that do not allow any ultraviolet light to pass through them prevented the chemicals underneath from being exposed to the light, so the paper stayed white in color. We call these materials that completely block the transmission of light opaque. When we wear UV protective shirts, we're using opaque materials to block the transmission of UV light. We may place an object on the cyanotype paper that allows just a small portion of the light through. An object that allows a small amount of light to pass through it is called translucent. If you wear a cotton shirt in the sun, it will give you some protection from UV light, but you can still get a sunburn through it because the shirt is translucent. The glass plate that was placed on top of the cyanotype paper allowed all of the UV light to pass through. This type of object is called transparent. It doesn't block the transmission of light at all, so the paper underneath turns blue. Playing around with opaque, translucent, and transparent materials can give you cyanotype prints that appear to have shadow and depth.